Hi everyone, it's Peter Zellums, Grinny Flicks Adventure Aid, and welcome to another video. I've been on tour over the last three or four weeks, and that's the reason why I haven't posted many videos, but I'm back now, so I've been I've been touring the Flinders Range 4x4 private adventure tours with a couple of my clients. Photographic 4x4 adventure tour, which I personalize for whatever people want to do and on the outback journeys off the beaten track. So three weeks was Flinders Ranges uh, and also crossing the Simpson Desert. Literally the Simpson Desert opened up the day before we were able to cross it. So there's going to be some great material coming out from that, some nice videos. Uh, but today's video is about all the things that went wrong. <laughs> so 10 things that went wrong uh, during the trip with the trailer as well as with the camper, uh, with the uh, Troopy, the, my Land Cruiser Troop Carrier and um, how I fixed them whether it was on during the tour or afterwards and maybe with some of the bush fixes as well and, and how I got around those problems so let's tackle those off the 10 things that went wrong but like I say always with my adventure tours is that it's only adventure if you survive to tell the story so hence these are the 10 things that we are able to fix up survive and tell the story here we go number one can you guess it's tires it's always tires so now we didn't have any problems with our tires but where the problems were, were we fixed up other people's tyres. We came to the rescue of a number of people and the first thing that uh, people had problems with, they didn't have the correct jack so they couldn't actually lift up their vehicle at all. So that was the first car that we rescued was the jack. The next thing that they also had a problem with is getting those wheel nuts off. There's a high probability that Whoever changed the tyre last it would have been one of those pneumatic drills that do up the wheel nuts really tight. So if you haven't used your, your wrench, your wheel nut tyre wrench, on your wheel nuts, there's a high probability either it's the wrong size or you can't undo it. And usually the wrenches are too small compared to the ones that they use with the pneumatic drills. So the answer to the question the only thing that I found to be able to handle those uh, pneumatic drills is one of these crossbar tyre wrenches which has a number of different fittings whether it be metric or imperial so you have to sort of work out what sort of uh, vehicle you have but they're pretty close, the metric and the imperials are pretty close so this is the, met the imperial one and I found that this is handled my vehicles plus anybody else that we've actually helped along the way so does your jack work do you have a wrench for those nuts the other challenge that we had when we helped someone else actually fix up their tire was that some of the vehicles in this case here was a Hilux they have their tire underneath the back tray and therefore you need to have a rod that goes in there to lower that tire and you need appropriate wrenches as well. So the second vehicle that we helped, they didn't know where the tools were for their for their tire release at the uh, bottom of the tray there. Eventually they found it and then once they did find it, then they had the same problem, they couldn't get the wheel nuts off. So I came to the rescue with the wrench. There you go. Number one, it's always tyres. The number one problem when you're going on travel, always tyres, jack, and do you have a wrench to be able to take the nuts off? Okay, number two, I've, I've written the list down here, so I'll just go through those. So number two was the water pump. Now, with my setup, I had the water pump, I had jerry cans in my troopy, and also jerry cans also on the trailer here. So I had an electric water pump on the Troopy, which is really convenient uh, for filling up water bottles, etc. 
That failed because of a design feature in the water pump. So if there is any loose water around the place, you got it near the connections and there was no drainage area around the connection so that it filled up and then created a short circuit so that was the first problem and then the second problem was that it actually then created some corrosion and then there was a loose uh, connection and therefore the pump stopped working completely so vibration is your biggest enemy in outback journeys uh, on dirt roads because of the corrugation so everything that's going to go vibrate or, or get wrecked it's going to be done because of the vibrations so now i couldn't diagnose it or didn't have the time to diagnose it during the course of the journey and um, but because i had jerry cans it meant that i could just take the jerry cans out and use fill up water bottles accordingly that's the advantage of having jerry cans as opposed to everything in one main tank so if something goes wrong with the main tank either the water gets contaminated or the water pump fails as it did in my case here then you got a challenge of how do you get to your water the advantage of having multiple containers when it comes to water so that was easily fixed when I did get back from my trip then I was able to diagnose the problem drill a couple of drainage holes in the cover for the electrical so that that won't occur again and just secure those electrical connections so we don't ever so it doesn't uh, stop operating all right that was a water pump that was number two all right number three the trailer brakes on the trailer here failed now the reason why they failed was the electric brakes okay that's the first thing and uh, that means there are wires that connect to the car and to the brakes there's a lot of stones on the dirt tracks in central australia We've even got a desert called the Stony Desert. So some, those stones are normally sharp. They get kicked up by the car and they get bounced around underneath the trailer. And it's so common that those stones will just sever any electrical cables that are underneath your trailer or under your car. Um, the Troopy has got metal bash plates all over the place, the metal plates that actually protect all the electricals. But the design of this trailer had the wires there I've had um, hose uh, water hose pipe around those wires but even that it still severs so that's what happened here the other challenge I have with uh, these uh, trailer brakes particularly with drum type trailer brakes is that you could never sort of set it up quite correctly with the main car so either the trailer is not braking at all or it's doing all the braking and therefore the pads wear out very quickly and that's exactly what's happened with this so now the trailer is not too heavy again a good advantage um, trailer only weighs seven uh, I think 700 kilograms so most of the braking is done by the car anyway so I'm not too concerned about that one so we lived with that one this is number four the gas regulator gas regulator on my gas bottle for the stove here all right so i've got a gas stove which is great the gas bottle and there's the new regulator which monitors the pressure that regulator failed now the way they the regulators fail is they fail in an off position they gradually get worse and worse and worse and before you know it you have no gas at all going to your appliances and that's exactly what happened uh, so that was halfway through the trip and now we were able to get over that because in the Troopy I also have a Trangy methylated spirits burner which is foolproof no moving parts it always works and that's what we use for the rest of the trip including campfires where I have a grill and a Dutch oven and so there was no problems about continuing our trip even though the main gas burner failed uh, should I carry a spare regulator? I don't know. This is the second regulator that's failed over the last three years. Do they often fail? Again, vibration is the main issue, I suspect. Um, I'll be interested to get people's view where they've had the regulator fail on a, reg on a regular basis. All right, so that's the regulator. That was number four. Number five. My Troopy comes factory fitted with rear diff locks and front diff locks and I rarely use them to tell you the truth 
Yes, I use four-wheel drive just by the central uh, four-wheel drive lock, low ratio and high ratio. But it's not often that I actually have to use the diff locks. But in the Simpson Desert, um, when you're using, when you get it bogged and you're using, for example, the Max Track sand ladders, then I find diff locks really work well because then rather than having one wheel spinning, it evens out the spin and helps grab the ladders and everything like that. The diff lock on the Troopy failed. The rear diff lock. It's in for a service today, so I can't give you a report on exactly what went wrong. It worked for a while, and then somewhere through a sand dune and one recovery, it stopped working and never worked again. The front diff lock continues to work. Everything else continues to work on the Troopy. There will be an update on that one. Okay, tire pressures. Back to wheels again. Uh, one of the reasons why we got bogged on a few sand dunes is I had the tire pressures too high. I always talk about this as well. Just put those tire pressures down. I was operating, I thought I was operating low enough, uh, 25 at the front, uh, back and about 20 on the front and that was handling most sand dunes. I was towing this trailer over the sand dunes in Simpson Desert. But there was a couple there that um, we got bogged on, we had to use the sand ladders. It'll be in the movie when it eventually comes out. Uh, sand ladders worked really well, it's just that extra time that you have to spend. I mean each time you get bogged, you at least half an hour to get out of that. And in one case, we had to use the sand ladders four times, one in front of the other four times to get over the sand dune. And in the position we're in, we couldn't reverse anymore, so we had to go forward. So, yes, tyre pressures. Now, having said that, uh, later on in the trip, when we did Big Red in, in the Simpson Desert, I know from past experience, I just automatically let my no, tyre pressures down. The, the Troopy, without the trailer, the Troopy I put down to 17 at the rear and 15 at the front, 15 psi, pounds per square inch. It just, it just crawls up sand dunes like that. Yes, momentum's always your friend, but if you can't have the momentum, well then you gotta always let the, side, the, the tires down. The other point of having low tire pressures in the Simpson Desert is that you stop the bouncing that happens on the way up and sculpting out the track, which makes it a nice smooth track for everyone and for the next uh, driver that goes through. Tire pressures, get them right down. Okay, that was number six, I think. All right, so number seven failure. In the Troopy, it's only got front doors, but it's got back seats. So that means the passenger seat has to be moved forward and slide forward and slide back and whatever. Um, that mechanism failed and um, it failed right at the end of the trip so I wasn't too concerned about it. It was a simple repair, the cable that controls that fell off, I just reattached it. Okay, we're getting breezing through these. Number eight, what failed next was the fridge. The fridge works, but the connector, because it's a cigarette lighter type of connector, um, sometimes came out due to vibration again, which then turned off the fridge, of course. Now. The good setup that I have in the Troopy is that I've got a temperature gauge which I have uh, which I monitor located just above the driver's seat there. So I can actually see what the temperature is all the time of the fridge. So as soon as the fridge temperature starts to go up, I know that something's gone wrong and therefore I can check the connection and see what's turned off. Now, it's a simple fix. I haven't done it yet, but I will be doing it. I put some cable ties around so that it doesn't vibrate loose. So that's a simple one. Okay, vibration again, uh, cargo barrier for the Troopy. The mounting bolts, one of the bolts came loose and started rattling, easy fix. A uh, more permanent fix would be to put a lock nut on that bolt as well. And um, probably the last one, which was a bit of a pain. This particular trailer opens up and you need a winch to open it up. It's part of the mechanism that's here and there was a rope for that winch, the rope snapped. Now, I was able to fix that because I had excess ropes. I always had to carry about 10 different ropes, different thicknesses, because you're always tying something down. I was able to use one of the ropes to replace the winch rope. So that's it, 10, <laughs> 10 fixes. Um, like all good adventures, things go wrong, but as long as you can fix them up, you continue to have that adventure and it doesn't ruin the uh, experience. I hope that's been useful. 
uh, comment, like, like, I like the likes. Actually, the channel likes the likes. So if you like it, please do put thumbs up, do subscribe if you haven't already subscribed, and uh, press notifications. And we look forward to seeing you on the next video. There's gonna be a lot of material coming up. I'm actually on tour. I'm only back in Sydney for a week and then on tour again for two weeks going around Lake Air and ending up in Alice Springs where I'll be leaving all my equipment before I start my next uh, tour which will be going from Alice Springs across to uh, Western Australia so if, if, if you are interested in private tours basically tailored to, to what sort of adventure you want 4x4 Outback Australia let me know, contact me maybe we can create a tour that uh, it's good for you too whether it be photography or just the getting out in the wild wild outback of Australia look forward to seeing you on the next video thanks again for watching cheers